Good morning, good evening, and welcome to the show. This is Kiki's chat show. It is normally a radio show, but in view of COVID, I do it at home, so it's just the internet. However, it is streamed onto YouTube, and from next week, it will be streamed onto through a radio station. So I'll tell you all about that later on. Good evening, and today is another Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, the 9th of September, the year of our Lord, 2020. I always add the year of our Lord because we're in God's hands, and um, 2020 is an education that three people will say of Ghana would say is an insofre and as well in such as which it means test is a testing year but with positive thinking and um clear thinking as well i think we will pull through today is another interesting discussion that i'm going to have with a very beautiful lady um, who lives in the United States of America. So this show really is, will be in partnership with America. I've had a good weekend. I think I should share it with you. I had a brilliant weekend. It was my birthday. And... Um, you know, in view of COVID restrictions and everything, we didn't have a big birthday because we didn't want um, or we couldn't uh, invite people as we had planned. So um, it was going to be a quiet Sunday with just family, you know, my brothers and our children. I didn't even invite cousins, nothing. It's just me, my brothers, and our children. And then um, we, on the Saturday night, we went a bit of shopping to buy curtains and do make my house a little bit nice for the day. Came back, was tidying up. And my niece calls me. My brother calls me and says. My niece is at the door. We open the door and there they all were with a huge tray of seafood. <clears throat> so we kind of got in. There was so much excitement and flurry and got all sorts of accompaniments, put the seafood, lay the table, put everything together. And my God, it was beautiful. I mean, I, I, I am blessed. And I'm very great. And my gratitude goes from God down to everybody around me. We had a brilliant time. We tattered as we ate, cracking crabs, eating prawns. My son then made some other things, added it to it. And it was a brilliant evening. So we then had to tidy up because, you know, the next day was the birthday and all of that. But this went on past midnight. So everybody wished me happy birthday. There was merriment and singing. It was fun. We went to bed, slept a few hours. A friend knocked on my door. She brought a present. We sat there, chatted a bit. And then as I am actually a Christian, my brother, um, you know, church, they invited me on remote so i clicked on the remote section of the church service and they mentioned my name and wished me happy birthday and and the priest actually sang happy birthday to you and it, i just you know i was sitting there like a five-year-old i was so excited and happy to think that you know like the priest was singing for me and then, you know, the a hymn was sung, and they prayed for me. And I felt so happy. I don't know, in my heart, my soul. So after that, we came, we, we kind of had laid the tables and everything, you know, I wanted everything white, the tablecloth and all. 
food came we had other food so it arrived we laid the table and everyone suddenly i had unexpected guests they came we there was more merriment there was excitement you know so you know cake and then cake started coming i had my cake then another cake then a box of cupcakes with my name on some of them c in gold oh god so it you know it, i i didn't expect any of this and i got a lot of presents my school my classmates sent me a beautiful hamper from fortnum and mason i had bottles of champagne i had so people i'm sharing this with you not because i'm bragging there's, there's a proverb in ashanti which says when you don't have anything and you talk a lot it means you're bragging but when you have it and you are saying it it is gratitude i am grateful this is my gratitude overflowing brimming over i had a beautiful time and you know even in COVID, because the way that i had planned to have this party that people were gonna come from america ghana this this that i didn't do any of it and yet i was so grateful to god for it and it shows it says in in life sometimes you can let it go beautiful things will come out of it so my people this is how i spent my weekend now thought for the week thought for the week is not an actual line of proverb it is actually something to show how far women have come and the thought for the week is this if you are a woman who is very old very young completely broke rich single stubborn hangs out with other women has ever had an argument with other people in your neighborhood or where you work if you have too many children or you don't have any children at all if you have a birthmark or a tattoo or if milk has run sour in your house this is this part is for the co um the caucasians <laughs> you would qualify as a witch in 1692 now i tell you this because in 1692 a woman could not be herself you have to be looking over your shoulder you have to be careful about what happens to you careful about what you say careful about your neighbors careful 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 because you do not know at what point somebody would call you a witch people these days we don't even think about those things those are not our problems we have passed surpassed and far past that women are doing great things women are very powerful in their lives in their communities in society even so we still haven't got where we want to be so people just put this in your mind and think that at some stage you would have been called a witch we some of us all the things we do now is akin to witchcraft it's not i think gossiping is witchcraft i think being insidious and nasty is witchcraft but i think to succeed in your life to have a dream and to put yourself forward can never be witchcraft. Today, my guest is one of those who may have been called a witch in 1695. But today, she is a woman with a purpose. My guest is called Mary Interior. Is that is that the is that how yeah Mary you know? Interior? Mm -hmm. You know, we have something in common. We do. And what we have in common, we have quite a few things in common. We have nice um tatas 
we went to the same school different times i never met her she's so young and i'm so old I'm about to become a witch well mary has traveled to the u.s to pursue her dream of designing intimate apparel at the world renowned fashion institute of technology it's called fit in new york city and she had that dream all the way in accra when she was a young girl i you know whilst in america when she got there she drove a cab among other things which she herself will tell you and did several jobs while working towards her dream so she didn't she did not just dream and then let it happen it, she had to work towards it she's a single parent she holds five degrees including an mba and has a track in healthcare management she is a very powerful entrepreneur i'm very proud to meet you thank you very nice to meet you too Candy. welcome to my show welcome to kiki's chat show thank you thank you yes now as viewers will know and you will you found out recently that i interview women especially women who have a story a dream an illness an experience or something to share to interest or boost or even lift any other woman so that's why you're here to help us boost someone or aid someone or you know put someone in the right direction okay so what was your actual dream tell me well growing up I, I i learned very early in primary school that i i was more gifted than others in certain areas i believe we're all gifted some are more gifted some are less gifted in terms of the decolletage and um i was working at the time i had a business where i was sewing um for women and children but it got to the point where it got very monotonous. It wasn't very exciting for me anymore. And as I had found that I needed what my what I needed wasn't um, something that was very vastly catered to, I then decided that I had to study the craft. I had to learn how to make intimate apparel so that I can cater to the full figured woman. So that's when this started. I dreamt this in Ghana, which is why I came to the US to study at FIT, New York City. Okay. So it's purely because of the sewing. That's why you, whilst you were sewing, this idea came up. It was well, because of the sewing. That was part of it, but also because of my own personal experience. Because oh, I was okay. bustier than most. I was bustier than my mother. <laughs> Um, and it was becoming a little bit more difficult to find um, very fun, pretty, they seem all very, um, what do you want to say, very foundation looking, very traditional, very standard. Um, so I wanted to learn how to make it so I could provide it in a large variety for women my size. Excellent. So were you able to start the education? Did you just come into the States and go straight into the university or what did you do? That, that was my thought. That's what I thought I could do. I thought, well, I'm already sewing, so I'm going to come. I'm going to go to school, finish it quickly, um, work a little bit, get some machines and go back. But no, it didn't happen that way. Um, as many of us have found out, we have plans when we go out of the country. Um, it doesn't always work out the way we plan it. Um, so I realized when I got here that it was very costly. I couldn't afford it. And so I had to work to save up to go to school. Now working to um, didn't come by very easily. So I had to, I had to do a lot of menial jobs. Um, it's not menial um, for many, um, but I only use the term menial loosely in that it was something that I had to do to get me to my goal. 
So driving yeah. a car does not menial at all. It's very challenging, especially as a woman. And I wasn't driving the world famous yellow cabs in New York City. I was using my car as a gypsy cab, they call it. So it's not as though you could bet the customer or the fare that was going to be sitting in the car. If they use a yellow cab or if they call the base, this is you driving on the street and someone stopping you and you taking them wherever they needed to go. So that was even riskier at the time. But it helped me a lot in terms of um, building resilience in me because there are many times when a few fares refuse to pay. What do you wow. do? This is New York City. What do you do? You can't say, listen, give me my money or else. No. And around that time, this was in the early 90s, and around that time, a lot of cab drivers were being killed for any reason and no reason. So it was a very risky period, but the risk also brought along its excitement. You know, the risk it made, it, it made it more exciting. To me, it was challenging. And the more the challenging it was, the more challenging it was, the more excited I was to see it through. So that was one of the jobs I had to do to help me get to save up. And then another job I did was also, I had to go to school to learn that, to become a certified nursing assistant to care for the elderly. Um, fortunately for me, I had one patient I was caring for um, during that period. I cared for quite a few, but this particular patient um, was open to me studying while caring for him. So mm -hmm. there was a college nearby and I was able to take on a few um, courses um, which resulted in two degrees that was helping me towards my goal to go to FIT. This was all to help me to get to FIT. Um, and so that was good in terms of um, furthering my education while I worked towards my dream, my true dream. Um, and in the wow. end, it happened. After many years, I mean, I saved up. I remember I saved up to go to FIT and something happened the first time. And the second time, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to go. My mother died. Oh, no. And so I had to go home to bury my mother. And so it wasn't until I came back from the burial that I told myself, okay, I'm giving myself a couple of years. I'm going to work. I'm going to save up after which time I'm just going to move back to New York City and work, go to school full time. So that's when that happened. A few years after I had been here, but it did happen. So how was it on your first day at FIT where you have struggled, sacrificed, nearly been killed and all of this just to get there? It was elating, extremely elating. I felt as though I had finally come to the US, that's how it felt. Although I'd been here several years, I felt like I had finally come because I was finally doing what I came here to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yes. yes. So basically you hustle, you know, this is the hustling of one woman on her own to get to where she wanted to be. Yes, and that name I wear it proudly. I am a hustler, and I'm not shy to say that. <laughs> I'm not really? afraid at all. We all hustle. I mean, it comes to a point in a woman's life where you have to do several things just to make ends meet or to feed your children or to, you know, realize a dream or, you know. So, you know, if you're a hustler, I don't think it's, it's a negative connotation at all. I agree. At all. At all. Well done. So what I mean, how did you how did you manage? You know, you wanted to do intimate apparel. Have you actually managed to do the intimate apparel or do you have a design or have you started designing? Where where are you? When you finished, what did you then do? When I finished, I interned with um, Vanity Fair Intimate Apparel. They are no longer uh, an organization. Um, and Warnico. Warnico is still in existence. They make Waco bras and other bras. Um, and that was when, actually, while I was in school, I realized that 
like home, you know, as we all know, you want to make something, you want an outfit made, you get the fabric you want, you take it to the um, tailor or the dressmaker, they get it done. Maybe you get one fitting if it's very complicated, um, but otherwise they take your measurements, it's made to measure. So you go, you pick it up, it's done, you leave. So while in school, I realized that intimate apparel design was totally different from dressmaking, which was mm -hmm. my background. Um, it had, it was, it borders engineering, intimate apparel does. Wow. They, yes, the the grains of the fabric all play a role in the fit of the bra. The placement of the grains play, play a role. We all know the weft warps and the warp, you know, of any fabric. We know yeah. the bias, we know all that. You, depending on where you place it on the girls, is going to give them the support or lack of. And so when I finished school and I interned with Vanity Fair Intimates and Warnaco, I also noticed that once you design the bra, you give it to the sample hands, the sample hands are the ones who put it together. You, you can't just send it out to the manufacturers wherever they are and have them ship it out, make it in mass quantities and ship it to whatever department stores. You need to have a fit model come in to check the bras. And when they come in to fit it, sometimes one bra that you start designing in May may not be finalized until October. Because one, one, the test bra, you mean? I'm telling you. One no, one bra, one concept of a bra that yeah, you start one, yeah. in May, you get a fit model to come in, she puts it on, you realize you have to tweak some part of the pattern. So then you have to take it off, you have to fit the pattern, recut, send it back to the sample hand, have a fit model come in again. And then there's something wrong, she's not comfortable. So you have to go back, change the fabric. You have to, there's so much. The fit model can come in for probably 10 to 15 times for one bra. One, until you have it perfectly just so, then it goes to production. And so that's what I learned. It was really great for me to work with those companies because they were well known. Um, and they each, although Vanity Fair had its way of going about things, so did Warnaco have their way of going about things. So it was wonderful to work with them and learn all the other skills that were uh, required to get a bra out on the floor. Wow. So what, where are you now? Are you actually at the bra stage, the engineering stage? Where, where are we? You see, I ask this question because there are a lot of ladies on here right now. Mm -hmm. And all we want is a, the bra that will cover all our needs. We need a good bra. We are looking forward to the person who is going to create and i think just like nursing doctors teachers this is a, a serious calling you have to be in the business in the mind in the spirit to create what we are all looking for mm -hmm. i have so i have specific needs and so have a lot of my friends mm -hmm. so tell me where are we well, I am ready to design. I am ready to design. I made a few prototypes, but then I realized that it's very cost intensive. It's extremely cost intensive. And so, um, did I lose you? No, I'm here. We can see you, pay attention, just switch off your phone. Okay, I did, but for whatever reason, um, yeah. I can't see you. Um, so as a result, I decided, sure I oh God, as a result, I decided to go into, um, into shower caps, okay. making shower caps, um, which was an area that I also noticed there was a need to find a shower cap that was sturdy and comfortable for women, um, and pretty. So I decided to start with that shower caps and then later next spring i'll be launching my shower wraps with it um to hopefully help feed the intimate apparel business bras i've learned so much i can't wait to put it into into being 
but like I said, it's very cost intensive. I worked in an intimate apparel specialty shop for 12 years. And during that for time, 12 for 12 years, okay. during that okay. time, um, I worked my way up from salesperson to assistant director of special needs. Now, special special yes. needs had to do with mastectomy patients and caring okay. for mastectomy clients. That is an area that I also want to go into because I also noticed that um, there were not many, many variety that were pretty. They were all very basic and standard. So, um, while in the intimate apparel shop was when I discovered that they, um, one of the vendors that we carried with shower caps was, had gone out of business. So then I decided, I asked the company if I could make that and slip into that market for them. And they were elated about that. So I started with a shower cap business um, for the lingerie shop. But hopefully down the line, I may not start with bras, but I'll certainly start with sleepwear with comfort where there's still support for the girls um, and then work my way from there. But it's all about, are you there Candy? Yeah, keep talking. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying. I'm there, we can see you. You are okay. the only one on the screen, everyone can yes. see you. Okay, so it's all about um, the expense that comes with it. I don't want to just make something shoddy. I want to make something that I can stand behind and vouch for. And that is all that's holding me back. So hopefully what I've started with the shower caps and the shower wraps will feed that financially. So then I can start the intimate apparel business design um, properly, launch it properly. Okay. Do you wanna, if we can see the shower cup behind you, Mm -hmm. And we can also see the shower wrap. So mm -hmm. do you want to show us, if, if you move your body a little bit, to demonstrate to us what exactly you are talking about? And then we can move on to the bra. Yes. I think I should move this way. Yes. Yeah, the, the other one. Yeah. Okay. So the shower wrap, um, I think many people are aware of this or have familiar with this. It's, it's, with, it's made with... Um, terry cloth and this terry okay. cloth is double-sided it's like velour so there's one okay. side that has it both sides have the pile which most terry cloth have but the side that's closest okay. again you feels like butter and the other side is okay. on the outside but it both wicks so once you wrap yourself it wicks the water that's off on you and it's okay. like a towel without having to worry about you know in morning school, most of us yeah. put a towel and fold it and over. We tie it there and it keeps falling off. And then we tie it again. So every day, you're, in, in fact, every time you've got the towel around you, your hand is, your mind, your brain, everything is on it's the cool. corner of the towel so it doesn't fall off. Right. right. So this has a Velcro fit a closure, which makes okay. sure it doesn't come off at all. You're, you're, oh. you're secure. And, yeah. um, also going to have it has a um a different color stitching just to coordinate with the shower cap because okay. it's not just plain white we just don't want to make it plain white so it has a contrast color stitching on the edges so then you can either coordinate it with the shower cap or without the shower cap has 10 colors right now um and okay. this is on showercap.com if you go there you would find that um, so this is coming out in next spring and mm -hmm. that's already out. The shower cup is already out in the market. Um, somebody is asking if you've done a business plan to shop for seed investors to fund your bra business. Because there are people out there, in fact, in this present time, we have women who, who could help. So have you got a business plan? I, I put together a business plan. This this company has been in existence for 10 years now. And I put together a business plan then when I was shopping for investors. Um, when that was not happening and it seemed very discouraging to me, um, I was fortunate to find that opening of the shower cap opportunity. So I jumped okay. into that instead and forgot about that. But I'm happy to revise it and send it to anyone who's interested. Okay, good. I think we may have somebody on watching now who 
who may be able to put you in the right direction. So we can talk about that after the show. And if there are any others as well who are interested to help her with seed money or to even do a GoFundMe, uh, you know, so that, you know, with her, please let me know and we, we can do that. Now, people want you to get busy on the bra. It's the bra that I'm interested in and, and a lot of people on here. And the question is, can you make nude colors for us? Because you see, nude, in this present life we are leading, we black people or people of color or whatever you want to call us, black, brown, color, we never get our nude. That's what we want. We want our own nude. And I want a bra that when you wear it and, you know, you have an accident or, you know, accidentally a button comes off, it, 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 can, shake, it can shake an elephant. Absolutely. That, that's what we want. That's what I'm looking for. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I, I'm, I love design. That's the core of me. That's the essence of me. Designing, 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 and coming up with ways. For me, I know all of us women, we have different shapes. Um, there's something called the Windsor shape, which is a small back and a voluminous front. I happen to be, to be of that shape because I have a small back, but I'm quite voluminous. So I'm an M cup. I call them the M and M's just to make me feel happy about that letter. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but many people, are, many people are stuck on letters when they have to go to a G or an H or an, an I, J. It means nothing. It just means you're well gifted. You're more gifted. And and you have and a soul. And doubt. And doubt. The, the Yiddish, they say zaftik. You're zaftik. You're oh. just voluminous. So, and that's all glorious. You are overflowing with Yes. And that's all glorious. Like and so nothing, absolutely. Nothing. Yes. So um it's important to find um ways, innovative ways to create bras that will fit everybody type. Even within the same um company, the same style, for example, that is offered in different colors or different fabric ways, it wouldn't fit the same body the same way. Um, so it's important to make sure that whatever line that comes out, there's innovative functions on each bra to fit everybody. Some have narrow shoulders, some have wider shoulders, some have wider backs and smaller girls, it doesn't matter. They should be, I, I'm all for creating for the different body types. So how long have you been in the United States? <laughs> Is that a big question? <laughs> well, let's say this. I've been here longer than I was, in, I lived in Ghana. And I okay, came here cool. when I was 22, so. Wow, it's good. Um, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, if when you do make your bra, you know, bras are one of the most uncomfortable things, but because they lift you up and put you, you know, inside, it's restricting, it's uncomfortable. Most times it's uncomfortable, you know. You hardly get a good bra and when it's as good and comfortable it is so expensive how do you plan are you looking for comfort or you're looking for upholstery or what are you looking for when 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 you know i don't i don't know what word to put but you know, you I, know like, how, I like yeah, upholstery. You know, i like upholstery. Upholstery. <laughs> um the thing is comfort is relative Comfort is relative. Many people have worn bras. The statistics is 80%. Times, times, New York Times came up with um, finding that 80% of women are wearing the wrong bras. Um, but the thing is, many people wear bras that are comfortable. They go to the store, they pick up the bra, they put it on. It's comfortable, they go. They lift up their arms and the girls come out the bottom. That's a sign that the band is too big. Yeah. 
and um, they bend over and the girls are spilling. They're literally out of the cups. That's a sign that the cup is too small. Yeah. Um, they complain that the wire is pinching. First of all, that wire is too yeah. small. The wire should not be on breast tissue at all. And so for a person like that, who's been wearing a bra that's comfortable, they just go to the store, they pick it up, they buy a $20 bra, which is fine. Sometimes it's on sale, sometimes it's not, but $20 is fine. They buy it, they've been wearing that for over 20 years. And now someone has brought them in. Let's say, Candy, you bring them in for a birthday treat to be fitted and get the right bra. They were, they've been wearing, what, 36D? They come in and they find out they're a 34G. Now, for someone like that, it's going to be a whole process to retrain that mind because it's not going to be comfortable, but they're going to be upholstered. They're going to be lifted up and stay north as opposed to heading downwards. To what we, we all know gravity is going to do their thing. The girls are going to eventually go, do, go south. They will. But when we wear clothing, we want it to fit right on the body. We want the, the form, the silhouette of the dress to fit the body beautifully. And if the girls are lower, the, breast, the outfit doesn't look right. I always say it's all about the foundation. They call them foundations for a reason. You wear the right foundation, everything looks good over it. So for someone like that, they're going to say they're uncomfortable. They might not even get home when they take off the bra, but that's the right fitting bra. The customer is always right though. So if they are not comfortable in that bra and they want to stay in their 36D and hang low, what do you do about that? There's not much you can do because that's what they're used to. That's what they want to do. It's a whole re-education of the mind to let the woman understand. Sometimes it takes, I've had so many women come in and get fitted who were wearing the wrong bra for so many years and get fitted and they brought an outfit maybe to try with it and finally see that the girls are actually upstanding and they, they weep, they literally weep because they never thought they could look that good. So it depends if you're ready, if you're the woman who's been wearing such a very loose, comfortable bra for so long, if you're ready and willing to adjust and be changed, be more, then we can work with that. But you have to be open-minded to try something that's different, vastly different from what you've done for decades of your life. Somebody says to tell you that you need to make an, a concerted effort to market your product. You need, whilst you are doing the um, shower cup and you, you have to have the same focus and determination you use to get into fit to get this bra done quickly because there is a definite need for the bra. Trust me, the bra is 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 necessary it's it's we need it and there were many strong wise men in the time of moses but god gave moses the lead to take the people out to the promised land Amen. now i i'm looking at something like you are the moses of my breath and i need you to get us out of the wilderness into the promised land how do you see that i take on that that um <laughs> I, I, I hold this proudly <laughs> i like the way you are looking at me like what is she doing what is she saying I I no seriously um there is a big need i there is a need i've had a bra woman here as well i mean she's creating a bra where there is no wire and so because of that you know but trust me i don't even mind if there is a wire if the wire is not going to pinch me or hurt me but it i'm going to be fully done sorted when i wear a dress that 
you know, all of my beautiful attributes that I thank God for are in correct position. Mm -hmm. And it is forward ever. Backwards never. Absolutely. <laughs> so that is what the, yeah that that is what we're looking for now one question i need to ask you is what advice would you give to your 20 year old self after all the things you have gone through and all of you had a dream and you kept the dream through this dream you have had so many experiences etc what would you give to your 20 year old self who doesn't know what the future holds but has this dream drink deep huh? drink deep, drink deep. What, what does that drink mean deep. take a plunge you know, a lot of times we come to the edge of a cliff. I know I have come to the edge of a cliff many times. I've come to crossroads many times. And I have often wondered, is there a mattress down there to buttress my fall? Is there something down there to catch me in case I don't make it? And I yeah. think that has been, that has hindered my progress in a lot of things. Um, so to my 20 year old self, I'll say, jump, 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 jump. Is and it you know, because, mm -hmm. yeah, my, my question is, is it because if you look at it now, you could have jumped and yet made the right decision? Is that what you're saying? Looking back, there were opportunities I could have taken, um, but my pride was in the way. Okay. Um, and so I went my own path. Um, but I have learned <laughs> that there, there's a reason why that saying exists. Pride comes before a fall. There's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason that exists. Um, I have learned that there are times when you have to look at the bigger picture, not your pride. You have to look at the bigger picture and stay focused on the bigger picture. I have the wind. My mother always said, whenever the wind changes direction, go with it, don't go against it. And so whenever such an opportunity looked promising, I would change course and, but still keep my eye on the prize. But I figured, no, it's all right. I'll just sidestep this and take a different route. So to my younger self, I will say, take off that coat of pride, put it down, burn it and jump. Well, I think it's, it's a good, it's good advice. It's good advice. I think that, um, with everything in life we all need to uh we do we all do we make that mistake all the time we all do we all make that mistake all the time there are times when it is easy because of pride to move away from something that you know very well if you had stayed on would have taken you a little bit further. Exactly. Is that not it? A little bit further. May not have gotten me there, but would have taken me a little bit further than my detour did. Absolutely. But you see, at 20 years, as someone is saying that at 20 years, you have many years ahead of you to learn. And in fact, what is true about that statement is all the trips and turns that you had to get to where you are now, you are at the cusp of making it now. Um, maybe this is the right time. Some people crash and burn. They make all the right decisions and they crash and burn. So 
you needed to be there at this point you needed to go through all of that to be in the taxi to be nearly killed to be uh, all of those things were necessary at the time for you today to appreciate what you've gone through and to do the things that you wanted to do now i agree <laughs> if there is anyone who is out there who wants to join in i can send you the link and you can join in and ask mary any question that you want within reason i am there <laughs> within reason within reason so i'm going to send people the link and then we can talk but in the meantime what advice not your 20 year old self that was you but do you have advice for people who are starting business now is it different from what you would tell yourself I will say, because one of the biggest things um, I had to get over was counting on others or relying on others for help. Um, it takes a village, it truly does. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to do everything in life. And there's nothing wrong, get the help. Accept the help, get the help. Um, it doesn't make you any less of a person. Uh, my mother gave me advice when I was coming, and I've, I've contributed that to many people. Unfortunately, um, although I didn't heed that advice a lot of times, but she said, when you need to use the throne, we just go to the bathroom. Where do you use to use the throne? And the only bathroom available smells so bad. That's the only bathroom available, and you need to go terribly. Cover your nose and go pee. Because when you're done, there's no sign on your forehead saying this person peed in a smelly bathroom. <laughs> and I have come to find that is the best, the best advice you could have ever. That's all she said. And that's the best thing ever. I didn't always need it, but now it's my Bible. Because it doesn't make you any less of a person to accept help from other people. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't diminish your goal it doesn't diminish you your essence in any way if anything it helps you to bloom you become a, a bigger person a much better person than you were initially so take all the help you can get take it i have learned found that there are many people in the industry all out of that are willing to share their experience and advice and give a hand uh, but there are many too who don't so when you come around the ones come across the ones who are willing to impart their knowledge glean from Mitch, be the, the the driest sponge you can ever be and soak yourself up with everything that you have because that doesn't come easily i hope there are people there who are listening to this i also um I have put the link up, so if anyone wants to join this chat, the link is there for up to the hour, and then we shall be off. Somebody wants you to show the um, shower cup and the Velcro thing that you've got on. So if you want to show that now, again, what you are doing what you are in the pro what you she's actually the shower cups are on sale it's on her website isn't it yes yes cooking shower cups and yeah um i know there are many shower cups out there but i did a lot of market research and um analysis to realize that many of us buy shower cups from the pharmacy the shower cups from the pharmacy fall apart after two or three uses um and it's very bland looking. It's nothing to write home about. So I wanted something that was pretty. So I shopped and researched on fabrics as well, textures that were going to be comfortable enough on the hair and not harm the hair follicles in any way. So yeah. I 
decided to use um, a very soft to hand um, custom cotton blend. And okay. the cotton blend is only to make it wickable if there's any water that should get in. But unfortunately, none of the pesky waters get in because the oh. elastic around the shower cap is, I got a, found a wide one um, that was velvet, very, very soft to the touch. And so when you put it on, it doesn't leave a mark. How many of us have used shower caps that left a mark around the head, the face, once we used it? It doesn't leave a mark. It's very comfortable, sturdy. It doesn't leave a mark. And it makes sure that whatever you have under it does not get wet. And the other good thing is um, the shower cap is machine washable. I think, I think it was a good thing, a good feature, but a bad feature too, because I've had people who bought one shower cap and had it for five years. Five years. They throw it in the washing machine. They tell me they put it in the dryer. I don't advise it, um, but they throw it in the washing machine because you know we have the powders that we use and sweats and stuff. So after a couple of uses in the shower, you'll find that the band is discolored. So you put it in the washing machine, you wash it, and you, you dry it. I say, turn it inside out, dry it, and use it again. I've had people, it's on my Facebook cookie shower cap page where they've used their shower cap for years. So this is something that you're certainly going to get more than your money's worth when you purchase it. And it comes okay. in a variety of colors. Show them, show them the shower cup, please. Okay. Show them the um, cup and the, and, and the wrap. Just point at it so okay. that they can. So this is the wrap. Yeah. It has a Velcro finish, Velcro closure. You can hear me pulling it apart. Yeah. And it has elastic on the back. I don't know if you can see it in the mirror. There's elastic on the back. That makes it comfortable. Now, this will be offered in small, medium, large, extra large, and then extra, extra large. So wow. if your girls want to be comfortable, they will have a lot of room to feel free, to meet and greet. You know, they like to meet and greet sometimes, those girls. So and this is made with velour terry cloth. Um, it's double-sided. One side feels very like a velour. Many of you who are familiar with velour fabric is very soft to the touch. And the other side feels like a towel. So okay. I have put the velour side against you. So you feel nice and delicious. And the outside, but both sides are wickable. So um, you would still get dry if you put it on after the shower. Um, yes. So people, for those who say they came late, this is what she actually has. She has it on her website and you can go on the website after the show. It will mm -hmm. be on your, uh, it will be on this page, this Facebook page. So you can just check it and see, and it'll be there. You can buy your shower cup. You can buy your towel thing. Nice. Towel wrap. Shower and wrap. Then, yeah, but what I'm interested in is the bra. And yes. so we have people the same way, the same zeal that you went into the university with. I'm giving you one year to start creating those bras for me. I need that bra. And I and 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 you you both, me and you both, because I know that we both buy the bras from the same place. And we want to stop uh, buying it at that place and start buying your bras. And all my friends on here are also keen to buy your bra. Right? A year, a year is good. It's plenty. I take that okay. challenge. Okay. Yeah, because you've explained to us how long it takes to even do a sample, mm -hmm. how long it takes to build, and you know, I used to wonder because most bras are built by men, and there used to be an engineer working in the city, and you know, he was an engineer, engineer, engineer. Mm -hmm. So now I understand why. An engineer is the one who's creating something that is necessary for women. Therefore, they are putting us in straight jackets because they may create it, but they don't know how it feels when you wear it. Isn't well, that 
that that that may have been true many years ago but i have to say being in the industry there are a lot of female designers but i think that's also why they have the fit models in the women to come to put it on and they give us the feedback they give them the feedback that they work okay. on yes okay. so they have improved over the years okay that is exciting because what we need is a youth now the other thing is is there are there any black other people that you know i know one or two black people who are forging ahead. Now, do you know any black people? Forging ahead in what regard? In in the people are people are coming up with bra designs. No, I don't know any black people and that I don't know. It. I know two. Yes, ma'am. So I want you to be at the top of this whole game. And I want you because we went to the same school and I'm gonna say my she's from my school and she's you know, blah blah blah. I need you to do this. It is very important. And I even have an idea. So somebody gave me an idea the other day and I shall share it with you because I have a specific design that I need and I want my name to be on it. Yeah, so what is this it? <laughs> this black I am going to create will have to have my name on it. What is the design? We shall talk about that in chambers. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this has been, you won't believe this, but we've been talking for an hour. And uh, really? although, yeah, 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 we have, we are nearly up. We have four minutes mm -hmm. to go. And I don't know what else to ask you apart from to remind you that there are bodies that you can contact directly. But I think in life, you have to say it for somebody to say, oh, have you contacted X or Y or have you? So um, I'm going to put you through to somebody who is asking. And let's see what goes on from here because having a good bra is 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 going to change the dynamics of a woman's future trust me you can wear the nicest dress if you're wearing a black a, a, a bad undergarment it won't take you far that's right you never look good never so women when they feel confident inside of what they are wearing inside before they wear the outer garment it's going to change the world. Maybe these wars will stop. Maybe we'll stop having bad presidents and prime ministers. Maybe women are going to forge forward with confidence because they're wearing the right bra. I don't know. It's costing me loads. So one thing I will ask is, these bras that you're going to create, are they going to be affordable to all women or... Are they going to be the same price as where you and I go and buy the bra? <laughs> well, it will all depend on the manufacturer of the, um, the the one who gives us the fabrics. If the fabrics are affordable, then it would be easier to pass that on to the consumer. Um, but one thing I know is that the design, the design and the structural integrity of the bra is going to be top notch the structural integrity of the bra yes i saw one of the 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 comments and the person was asking for a good brown brown bra i can't find the comment now ah oh, she said we need dark brown lacy snug fit bras mm -hmm. um that is something, it's not just this person, it's this lady who said it, but quite a few people have said that. People want, I, I'm so used to buying either a black or a red, but you know, I mean, a nice brown, you know, brown sugary things for the brown skin would be so perfect. And so that's what we look forward to. So please, you are, actually on the clock from this moment from this discussion mm -hmm. i want you please think about this in this week start working on it and by 
this time next year, I will be wearing your bra to celebrate my birthday. Is it a big one next year? Every birthday for me is mega big. It's a gigantic one. Right. <laughs> now, um, I want to thank you so much for being on this show. I want you to come back with a sample. I want you to come back with me wearing the sample. I don't mind showing people what I'm wearing. I'm, I'm, I'm that type. I'm quite happy. To demonstrate the bra so thank you so much for coming on thank you very much for sharing your dream with us and thank you that you are on your way and that is what i need other people to see somebody who is actually on her way and she's there you are there you've gone through all of this just because of bras wow it's impressive thank you for having me it's i appreciate the time thank you it's a, an absolute pleasure now people my people thank you very much for watching i can see that a few new people names i haven't seen before are on the show thank you for watching thank you for all of us sharing this dream if you have a dream people let it go let that dream manifest let that dream come about don't let people stop you from working on your dream your dream is your life maybe it is a message coming from god or whoever it is your angel your guardian they're telling you this is what you can do work on it work towards it it will come to be people I had a dream and it came to be. Mary had a dream and it has come to be. Work on your dreams. Thank you very much for a wonderful Wednesday evening. Thank you, Candy. Bye-bye. Be well. Bye. You too.